Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to, well, is, uh, can you hear me okay? No. Um, hang on. I put new batteries in. Everything is good here. Well, just, we'll start. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning, and it is so nice to be able to worship together with each other on this second, oh, there we go. Wake up on this second Sunday in Advent. I would wonder if my helpers could come up. I, I think we're going to need a candle lighter. <clears throat> Should we start? Okay. What kind of candle do we need for Esther and Mary? Maybe it should be a dim candle to emphasize the darkness all around them. Or maybe it should be a bright candle because they were not afraid to do great things. I don't think any candle can be all those things. So let's just light one and wait and see what God does. Thank you. Oh, no, it went out again. <laughs> no. Okay, what are you doing? There we go, try that. Let's sing our Advent song, The Greatest Gift of All. Let your light shine before others, that they may see our good works and give glory to our God. Alleluia. Amen. Will you please join in our gathering song on your insert, Canticle of the Turning.
we confess our sins before God and one another. Radiant God, you have come to live among us, yet we fail time and again to see you in the faces of our neighbors. We look to ourselves instead of those in need. We seek the shallow comforts of things we can buy instead of the deep and lasting comfort of your presence. Forgive our stubborn refusal to see and open our eyes to the joy and wonder of your incarnation. Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy. The God of boundless grace forgives us all our sins, renewing our spirit for the sake of Emmanuel, God with us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of justice, you sent your servant Esther into a life of privilege so that those without would be taken care of. In our privilege, show us how to advocate for those who have less, so that your world may be peaceful and just. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The readings for today are starting with Psalm 18. Read responsibly. With the loyal, you show yourself loyal. With the blameless, you show yourself blameless. With the pure, you show yourself pure. And with the crooked, you show yourself preserved. For you deliver a humble people, but the haughty eyes you bring down. It is you who light my lamp. The Lord my God lights up my darkness. By you I can crush a troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall. This God, his way is perfect. The promise of the Lord proves true. He is a shield for all who takes refuge in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock besides our God? Stand for the gospel acclamation, this little light of mine on your insert.
The Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Here ends the reading. I invite you to be seated and invite the children who are here to please come forward at this time. We're going to meet right around here, right by this, right, right here. And I think we'll stand today. Well, you stand, I'll sit so people can see you because you're cute. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Okay. Do you know what you're standing around? Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's the thing that we use when we baptize people, isn't it? It's called a baptismal font, but mostly it's the thing that we use when we baptize people. Okay? We don't need to use the great big words today, do we? Do you know that when you were baptized, somebody stood up with you, your mom and your dad, and maybe somebody else, maybe an aunt or an uncle or grandma and grandpa, maybe some friends, all sorts of people were here to see you baptized or wherever you were baptized. And somebody handed a candle a lit candle to one of, one of the people who stood up for you. And they said the very same thing that Miss Carol just said. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. And that's your baptismal candle. And maybe you still have it, and maybe, maybe if you never got one, I will give you one, because I think everybody should have one. So what does it mean to let your light shine? What do you mean? What does it mean? I mean, it's not like we carry candles around all the time, or maybe a flashlight, or, you know, we don't have halos that glow or anything. So what does it mean to let your light shine? I don't know. Is it, it's hard to describe, isn't it? Do you know that feeling that you get in your, in your heart in your in yourself that like you feel like you're kind of glowing and you're warm and you're happy and maybe it comes when you are uh, cuddling with one of your animals or maybe it comes when you are watching your favorite <laughs> movie or maybe it comes when your little sister is playing with you right yeah or maybe <laughs> Maybe it comes when your mom and dad give you great big hugs or something. But sometimes we get that feeling inside that makes us just so happy. And that's how we let our light shine. That's how we glow for other people to see how much love you have in your heart and how much you want to love other people. That's how we let our light shine. We do the right thing, even when we don't even know we're doing the right thing, even when it's kind of scary to do the right thing. Do you remember the story of Esther? We talked about her in Kids Connecting Through Christ, and we had that big banquet, and we made placemats and everything. Do you remember that? Kind of? Okay. That's the story that we're going to talk about today is Esther. And while we talk about Esther, see if you can figure out how she let her light shine, even though it might have been a scary thing to do. Let's say a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for living in our hearts so that when maybe we don't feel like letting our lights shine, you can shine for us. Because sometimes it's scary to do the right thing. And sometimes... We're just not able. So let us let your light shine through us so that even when we don't feel very loving, the people can still see your love. We pray all of this in Jesus' name and all God's children said, Amen. Awesome. Thank you very much. Grab a treat.
Our scripture reading this morning for our meditation comes from the book of Esther, the fourth chapter. And since this is the middle of the story of Esther, let's recap what happened up to this point. Well, first of all, the Jews, God's chosen people, are again in exile. Somehow or another, some group of people who are strong, some king or a nation who are stronger than them, came and took over and moved all of the people of God into different countries. So here they are. <clears throat> the book of Esther opens with an enormous party. 180 days of party thrown by the king of the Persian Empire. That's where Esther was living. Ruling over 127 provinces. And as the days of the feast drew to a close, the king summons his wife Vashti, Queen Vashti, to show off her beauty by appearing only, by wearing only her crown. Well, Queen Vashti says, no, I don't think so. So the king banishes her. After a while, he begins to miss his queen. His officials propose an elaborate beauty contest for all of the kingdom's beautiful maidens so that he can choose a new queen. From all over the 127 provinces, beautiful women are brought to the palace, trained in ways that make him happy, give lessons in clothes and makeup, and one by one are introduced to the king for the night. Esther is a Jew who lives in the capital city. She is an orphan who was raised by her uncle or cousin or friend, Mordecai, one of the leaders of the Jewish people in exile. When they came to take her to the palace, Mordecai insightfully instructs her how not to reveal to her fa that her family uh, and that she is Jewish. So it takes 12 months. Esther is deemed the fairest of them all, and the king loved Esther more than all the women, and she carried charm and favor before him more than all the other maidens. So he placed the royal crown on her head and made her queen of the place, in place of Vashti. Mordecai doesn't tell anyone that he is related to the new queen, but he does frequent the palace gates to hear news of Esther's well-being. One day, he overhears two men plotting to murder the king, and he quickly sends word to Esther, who reveals the plot to the king in the name of Mordecai. The plotters are caught and executed, and Mordecai's name and deed are written in the king's book of chronicles. In the meantime, the king appoints Haman, as prime minister and issues a doctrine, a decree that all should bow down to Haman. Already driven by his family's historical hatred of the Jewish people, Haman goes to the king at the beginning of the year with 10,000 silver pieces and asks for permission to destroy the Jews. He presents the issue to the king as a matter of loyalty saying there is a certain people scattered and spread out among the people in all the states of your kingdom and their laws are different from other people's and they do not observe the king's laws. So it is not worth it for the king to leave them alive. Well, the king agrees and issues an edict to all 127 provinces, provinces saying that on the 13th day of the 12th month, the Jews in all the provinces are to be exterminated and their property kept as plunder. Well, upon hearing this evil edict, Mordecai dons sackcloth and ashes and he quickly sends word to Esther that she must go to the king and stop this horrible thing from becoming reality. Our Old Testament reading is Esther, verse, uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 17. When Mordecai learned all that had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went through the city, wailing with a loud and bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. In every province, wherever the king's command and his decree came, there was great mourning 
among the Jews with fasting and weeping and lamenting, and most of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's maids and her eunuchs came and told her the queen, queen was deeply distressed, and she sent garments to clothe Mordecai so that he might take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called for Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs and who had been appointed to attend her and ordered him to go to Mordecai and learn what was happening and why. Hathak went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate and Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasures for the destruction of the Jews. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree, gave her, him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction, that he might show it to Esther, explain it to her, and charge her to go to the king to make supplication to him and entreat him for her people. Hathak went and told Esther what Mordecai had said. And then Esther spoke to Hathak and gave him a message from Mordecai saying, all the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law. All alike are to be put to death. Only if the king holds out the golden scepter to someone may that person live. I myself have not been called to come in to the king for 30 days. When they told Mordecai what Esther had said, Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, don't you think that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews? For if the you keep silence at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise from the Jews from another quarter. But you and your father's family will perish. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to royal dignity for just such a time as this. Then Esther said in reply to Mordecai, go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf and neither ink, eat nor drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will also hold fast as you do. After that, I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. This is the word of God. And it sounds more like a fairy tale story than a story of, uh, that you would find in the scriptures. There's a kingdom and a king who's maybe not quite so bright, uh, who maybe has maybe just a little bit too much pride. There's a queen that is banished. There's, uh, there's, um, there's an orphan girl who has nothing. If her cousin or uncle or friend Mordecai hadn't adopted her to come and live with him, she would be a street urchin. And yet, she becomes the next queen. This is all very fairy tale kind of thing, isn't it? But then it doesn't really become, then it, then it becomes something very dark. And we start to hear in this story, history of what has happened in our own time. Somebody gets too proud. What happens, remember we talked about what happens when pride becomes something more than it ought to be? It becomes arrogance. And Haman was arrogant. And Haman, for some reason, decided that he needed to destroy the people of God. All because, Mordecai, or all because Mordecai would not bow down before Haman. 
Mordecai, let his light shine before others because he decided that he would not bow down to any man because God is his king. And he would treat no other person as his God. And because Mordecai stood and let his light shine, the light of God, a whole people were sentenced to death. And then we look at Esther, not Esther. Yeah, Esther. And what was she to do? She was put in a very difficult place. She had the power to go before, Mordecai, or before her king, but only if he called her. And we all know that the king is certainly not, you know, without a short temper, maybe? Maybe that's the way to describe it. He banishes his old king, queen. And certainly Esther must be thinking, what then could he do to me if I show up when I'm not expected? The interesting thing about the book of Esther is that you can read it from the front to from beginning to end, and I accept I I I think you should because it's a really interesting story. And not once will you hear a mention of God. Not once. God is not in this story. But God really is in this story. There was no there was no angel, there was no burning bush. There was no nothing. There was no, no um, prophet even that came to Mordecai and said, you need to do this. Or that came to Esther and said, do not be afraid. Uh-uh. No mention, not once, of God and the promise of God and the salvation of God. And yet we read it, we can see it. We can see God alive and working through the people in this story. God worked through Mordecai. God worked through all of the people who fasted. We, God worked through prayer. God worked through Esther. God even worked through the king who saved the people of, who saved the people of God. Read the rest of the story. It's bloody. God worked in all of those people. And they let their light shine, just as Jesus told the people that he talked to, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and glorify God in heaven. And that's what happened in this wonderful story of Esther. God is glorified through all of their bravery and courage. And it brings us to a, a memory, perhaps, the story of Mary, who was about the same age as Esther, when an angel came to her and said, do not be afraid, you will bear a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, God with us. She had as little power as Esther did before she became the queen. And yet, she let her light shine. And it was dangerous. And it took courage. And she was just like us, you and me. We sit here in this place and we worship God and we pray that our lights shine before others. And God uses us to let things happen in this world that maybe wouldn't happen otherwise. And sometimes we don't even know it. We don't even know that the actions that we take and the words that we use have any impact on anybody. I had a mentor in Sioux Falls when I was doing my practice. 
um, well, when I was practicing to be here with you, who said, it's a difficult thing to do, to stand up every week and preach the gospel and pray that the Holy Spirit is working, knowing that you will never know. You will never know what kind of impact you've had. It is. It's difficult. But Esther didn't know what kind of impact she was going to have. And Mary didn't know what kind of impact she was going to have. And all of the people who worked the will of God in the scriptures that we read, they had no idea how the world would change if they stood and let their light shine before others. We don't know. None of us do. We do know how we hurt people. We do know how to do that. We do know the impact we have when we go out and we say cruel things or when we do things that are unfair to other people or we think about ourselves before the th we think about other people. We do know that impact because all we have to do is look around. All you have to do is read the papers. Oh, don't read the papers. I can't recommend that. Read the Gospels. And then go do what Jesus said. Let your light shine. Because if you let your light shine, you will impact how the world sees you. You, you will impact how the world sees God. You will be amazed. Let your light shine even if you're scared, even if you think it's worthless, even if you think you can't possibly make a difference, know that you can because your light shining in the world makes a difference to the rest of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Our song of the day is God of grace and God of glory, but I got the wrong number. It's page 415 in the green book.
I invite you to stand as you are able, and we will profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We seek the mighty God in the most unlikely places as a child in a stable and in an empty tomb. May God hear these prayers which come from the unlikely corners of our lives. O God of the church, grant us your light that we might bear it to a world of darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all creation, grant healing and renewal to the earth that its splendors inspire our joy and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God above all nations, grant the world wise and compassionate leaders that all people know your justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of light, grant hope to the hopeless and peace to the anxious as we await the coming of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of healing, grant wholeness to the broken and comfort to those in pain that the suffering of the world might be eased. We pray especially for those we name in our hearts today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of this place and time, grant us boldness in our witness to your light and your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all time, grant us the assurance of eternal life that the example of the saints before us live on in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us ears to hear, O God, and eyes to watch, that we may know your presence in our midst during this holy season of joy as we anticipate the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We please share a word of peace with each other, however you are comfortable. You may be seated whenever you're ready, and we will receive our offering at this time.
Let us pray. God, you call us to bold action on behalf of the world. Accept now these gifts for the good of all your beloved creation. Amen. Please be seated. O oh God, from Mordecai to Esther, from John the Baptist and Elizabeth to Mary and Joseph, you call us to serve you. You speak peace and justice to us, that we may in turn speak peace and justice to the world. We turn our hearts to you in faithfulness and gratitude. During the time of Advent, we thank you that your salvation is at hand. We thank you for the glory of Jesus, your only Son, sent to dwell among us full of grace and truth. We thank you for his light, the light that no darkness can overcome. We thank you that he came to the that we might know that light of your love, enabling us to share that light with the world. Jesus existed before you created the world, yet in due time you sent him into this world to satisfy the longings of your people for his savior. He comes among us as one of us, taking the lot of the poor, sharing human suffering. Through him, you bring freedom to the captives of sin and establish justice for the oppressed. We rejoice that in his death and rising again, you set before us the sure promise of new life, the certain hope of a heavenly home where we um, will sit at table with Christ our host. We thank you for the great mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. As you may use the humble woman and her husband, a stable, the shepherds, and even the stars above to dwell among us, Use this bread and cup to dwell among us. Rekindle your light within us. Fall, fill us with and renew us. Strengthen and nourish us. Embolden and empower us. Unite us to bring good news to the poor, lifting blind eyes to sight, loosening the chains that bind, and claiming your blessing for all people. Keep us faithful in your service until we feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to all who were gathered there, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into Christ's family, let us pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lord's table and all who are gathered here are welcome to come and taste and see that God is good. Would the communion helpers please come.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> we give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy we would, you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I have some announcements that I'd like to share with you, but first, the Sunday school children who are here, thank you so much for being here, and I hope you had a good time. You are now dismissed to go to Sunday school. Make sure that you get a treat first, and then you can start practicing for the Christmas program, which will be here on December today. Thank you. December 18th. Thank you. Um, next week, next Sunday, the kids from uh, Kids Connecting with Christ or Through Christ will be here to sing also. Um, Sawyer has been teaching some Christmas songs and they would like to share them with you. So don't miss that. <clears throat> uh, the FCCLA and the Harmony Hustlers are hosting Santa Days today um, at the community center. The meal starts at 10.30 and Santa visits at 11.30. So um, they, there are some wonderful things that are happening at the community center. I understand there's a gingerbread house contest and so I've heard of some of the, some of the creativity and you don't want to miss that. Kids Connecting Through Christ meet on Wednesday here at 3.15. For, uh, Faith Formation and Confirmation meet at 3.45 F on Wednesday. The Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Wheaton is hosting Advent worship on Wednesday this coming up at 7 p.m. So we will not have Advent worship here um, as it is listed on the calendar so that you may participate in this event. It promises to be a very special um, service. The Rossold Oral Interp team will host Community Family Night on Saturday, December 10th, um, so next Saturday, this coming Saturday at 6 p.m. And I believe we'll be in the music room at the school. Um, you do not want to miss their performances. They are fantastic. And they did it all in spite of us. <laughs> Josh and I are very happy with the team and I hope that they had fun. Um, we had Three superiors, no, yes. William Alcotti got a superior in his humorous. Martina Ramos got a superior in her serious, and they both got superior in their duet that they did together. Um, it was fun, and please come out and support them. They, are, they did a great job. Um, there's a few things on the bulletin board that you don't want to miss. Um, I don't know if you saw in the, in the clarion or not, but Office Peeps offers a great deal on batteries this time of the year. So if you would like to purchase batteries at a great price, there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board. All you have to do is put your name in and what batteries you want and then make, uh, pay um, the church and we'll make one check out to Office Beeps, and that's the end of it. Um, there's also a sign-up sheet out there for um, helping with the food pantry this Christmas, if, or this season, if you would like to help with the food pantry, um, please see the sign-up sheet and, and um, offer your time and your talent that way. There are... Um, Forms on the counter for if you would like to purchase a poinsettia for the sanctuary. Poinsettias can be purchased anywhere and brought here, or you can purchase one through Susie, and she will deliver it. Um, please, if you fill out a form and tuck it under my door, you still need to contact Susie to, to purchase the flower because um, I won't remember to tell her. <laughs> anyway, um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, we have lots and lots of stuff that has come in for blankets for the December, um, for Christmas comfort bundles, and we also have n several names that have been brought in for people who would like to receive one. Um, we will 
schedule a time to meet and maybe have a little lunch or, or just potluck kind of thing so that we can put the bundles together and, and get them ready for distribution. Um, I don't have that date or time yet, but I will let you know. Are there any other announcements for the congregation? Yes. Uh, the, the cantata will be performed this afternoon in Sisseton at the Lutheran Church and next Sunday afternoon at the church in New Effington. Uh, there, only, it's holiday harmonies in Sisseton. There's a whole bunch of different groups. Okay. All right. So, yeah, this afternoon after you've gone to Santa Days and you still feel festive, you can run over to Sisseton and participate in Harmony Days. So, lots of stuff to do. Um, any, any other announcements? Yes. If you would like, uh, let me see if I get this right, next Sunday afternoon uh, is a, a benefit dinner and I believe silent auction as well, correct? Um, for uh, Ben and, is it Christine? Michelle. Michelle Kaler, um, who lost their twins, uh, twin babies earlier this uh, in November. Um, if you would like to make a donation but aren't able to go, I would be more than happy to collect donations and make sure that they get to the Kalers um, on Sunday. Um, it's, and please pray for them. Yes. Yes, would the Grace Circle members meet in Fellowship Hall after worship this, after, or this morning um, for just a quick uh, gathering? Prayer concerns or joys, like I said, please pray for the Kalers um, as they continue to mourn. Um, it, is a, it is a difficult loss to lose your babies. Um, are there other prayer concerns or joys for the congregation? Okay, then to God be the glory. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Will you please stand? And we will sing our sending song number 490, 499 in the green book.
Go in peace. The time is near. Jesus loves you. Thanks be to God. We could do that with one of them. We, uh, let me talk to counsel. Well, you I think, think about whether it's, uh, well, I mean, you should decide. Do you, does the food pantry need money? Do you need money for Well, I, I, I think it would be awesome if we could like hopes. I mean, like. I have one coming. How much do we need for that? Do you need more than one? I no, I think one. one. I think one is fine. Um, um, you think about it. Yeah, let me if think there's about something. it. And I mean, it's not to buy, as far as council goes, it's not to buy a copy of it. No, 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 no. So to me, I'm thinking if you have things that you do within the church that you know that you need, you can say that you have, I just said you're a coach. Yeah. They, they make us 